Imagine being so fierce and intimidating as a pitcher that only your presence on the pitcher's mound could send shivers down the spines of opposing hitters. Well, that is exactly the kind of effect Bob Gibson always brought to games in Major League Baseball. In fact, he was so ruthless that the league had to change the rules and because of his mean run. Of course, everyone who watched Gibson play will agree that this tall, mean, and never smiling bully was an absolute terror to batters. Even Hank Aaron, who's arguably the greatest home run hitter ever, testified to the sheer savageness of Gibson's play and how intimidating he was to batters. According to him, you don't dig in against Bob Gibson, he'll knock you down. Heck, he'd even knock down his own grandmother if she dared to challenge him. But then, beyond all the ruthless pitches, strikeouts, MVPs, and other achievements of this baseball Hall of Famer, who really is Bob Gibson? How did he find his way into the world of Major League Baseball? How did he become the most ferocious pitcher of all time? Prepare to be captivated as we unveil the astonishing journey of this man who carved his name in the history of baseball with unrelenting prowess and an unusually mean stare. We will also reveal the secret about how Bob almost missed out on playing baseball because of a respiratory disease. So be sure to watch till the end as there are more things to discover about this intriguing MLB legend. Of course, where better to start telling a man's story than from his early life? The year is 1935, and in a small, humble house, the Gibson family eagerly awaited the arrival of a baby boy, and he was to be a bearer of hope and dreams. As young Robert Gibson took his first breath, tuberculosis had claimed his father's life, leaving behind only a legacy and a name. This means that Bob grew up without a father. However, he would later go on to carry the legacy of his father's name to the greatest of heights. Fast forward to a few years later, you'll find a young boy brimming with an unquenchable passion for sports. Sadly, health hurdles like rickets and respiratory challenges tried to slow him down, but they didn't stand a chance against his determination. To him, baseball and basketball were more than just games, they were his calling. By the time Bob reached high school age, it had become even more evident that Omaha Technical High School was about to witness something extraordinary. Picture a young Gibson, not just as a participant, but a force of nature in three sports, including track, basketball, and the ever-beloved baseball. But then, there were still setbacks to overcome. Fate seemed to toy with this young star, again, sprinkling health issues onto his path, but he prevailed and went on to earn a coveted spot on the All-State basketball team in his senior year. Of course, that's not where this intriguing story peaks. Not at all because a few years later, the shooting star will find himself at Creighton University. Here, Gibson dove into sociology while also dazzling on baseball fields like he was already a pro. Plus, not only did he shine on the court, but his prowess also caught the gaze of two giants in the sport, including the Harlem Globetrotters and the mighty St. Louis Cardinals. In 1957, Gibson signed with the St. Louis Cardinals, securing a $3,000 bonus, which was obviously like a ticket to a new world. However, Bob wasn't ready yet. He married the same year and decided it was best to hold his dream of becoming a professional baseball player a little longer, at least till the time was right. Despite a shaky start that sent him back to the minors, Bob Gibson was ready to make his mark by the late 50s. After his triumphant return to the majors on July 30th, he stunned everyone with a shutout performance against the Cincinnati Reds, marking his first major league win. In 1960, Gibson danced between the big leagues and the minors, struggle peppered with various setbacks. In search for growth, he ventured to Venezuela for winter baseball, but it was the turning tides of 1961 that truly shaped his destiny. Under the management of Solly Hemus, Gibson's potential seemed obscured, possibly overshadowed by prejudice. However, a new dawn arrived with Johnny Keane at the helm. Keen, who had known Gibson from his minor league days, recognized the brilliance in him and granted him a chance as a full-time starter. No doubt this boosted the lad's confidence and Gibson started to flourish, boasting an 11-6 record and a 3.24 ERA for the season. Beyond the diamond, Bob, alongside teammates Bill White and Kurt Flood, also embarked on a groundbreaking journey against segregation. Their stance broke barriers, fusing the team into a unified force and preluding the Civil Rights Act a few years later. Then came 1962, the year of the star. This year, a 22.2 consecutive scoreless inning streak earned Bob a well-deserved all-star spot, cementing his status as a dominant force in the game. Everything was working out perfectly, and even a fractured ankle couldn't deter him. Gibson would go on to achieve his first 200-strikeout season, 
and this became a massive testament to his remarkable talent. As 1963 unfolded, Bob reigned supreme with six consecutive wins. This year, a redefined strike zone played to his advantage, allowing him to shine on the mound and outperform his pitching peers. Amidst the success of the 1964 Cardinals, Gibson emerged as the team's backbone. In the crucial Game 7, he pitched deep into the ninth inning, propelling the Cardinals to their first world championship in decades, and a remarkable 31 strikeouts etched his name in World Series history. The following season showcased Gibson's meteoric rise, marked by repeated all-star appearances and solidifying his status as one of the league's premier pitchers. Plus, the grand stage of the 1967 World Series against the Boston Red Sox became Gibson's masterpiece. During the series, his pitching brilliance shone bright, allowing only three earned runs across three complete game victories, a feat that was last achieved by legendary Christy Mathewson in 1905. Once again, Gibson rose as the hero in Game 7, delivering stellar performances on the mound alongside an impressive clutch home run. If you go into baseball archives today, you'll find 1968 etched in bold letters as the year of the pitcher. But then, have you ever wondered why it is so? Well, the simple answer to that question is Bob Gibson. In the 1968 season, Gibson's outstanding performance led to a mind-boggling ERA of 1.12. And yes, you heard that right. Bob etched his name in history with a live ball ERA record, a feat that had baseball enthusiasts pinching themselves in disbelief. And that's not all. He raised the bar by setting a major league record for a season with 300 or more innings pitched, touching the lowest ERA seen in the majors since 1914. And oh, those 13 shutouts he effortlessly threw? They brought him tantalizingly close to the coveted record set by Grover Alexander in 1916. No doubt, June and July of this year witnessed Gibson in an unstoppable symphony of brilliance. Now, picture this. 12 starts, 12 victories, and each one a complete game. Now, the icing on the cake is that he had 8 shutouts. 8! No doubt, this, alongside his mere six earned runs allowed in 108 innings, is a stretch that sounds almost unreal, but Bob did it. Moreover, his scoreless streak reached an astonishing 47 consecutive innings, a record that found its place in MLB history as the third longest scoreless streak. The astonishing player would rightly go on to earn the National League MVP award that year. Well, who else would they have given it to anyway? Indeed, the 1968 season wasn't just unique for Gibson. It was a stage where pitchers shone like never before. For instance, Denny McLean from the Detroit Tigers also mirrored Gibson's triumph by clenching the American League MVP award with his stunning 31-6 record. By the way, Gibson's dominance continued into the 1968 World Series, where he carved new records into the annals of sports history. Game 1 saw a display of sheer brilliance. They struck out a record-breaking 17 Detroit Tigers. But before you get too excited, this wasn't the only magic he spun that day. He also etched his name alongside the legendary Ed Walsh by striking out at least one batter in every inning. Of course, only a very few pitchers have managed this feat in baseball. Plus, many people believe it's another testament to his meanness, which a lot of baseball fans have become familiar with alongside his intimidating stare. Most people who witnessed the Gibson era would tell you his presence on the mound always brought a symphony of control and impeccable pitching mastery. This should definitely make you wonder what's in his arsenal. Well, it was a simple weapon that included the combination of a slider that could take you by surprise and fastballs, both two-seam and four-seam, that were unleashed from a low three-quarter arm angle. But then there was more to Gibson than just pitches and power. He was a fierce gladiator, unafraid to carve his territory within the strike zone. No doubt, batters knew the feeling of intimidation whenever they faced him, as his well-placed brushback pitches sent a clear message. He was in command. And if that isn't enough, his famous and intimidating death stare would do the trick. This fierce and unyielding approach drew comparisons to the great Don Drysdale. However, there was a distinction. While Drysdale's pitches often hit batters intentionally, Gibson mostly didn't play with that intention. Perhaps this explains why he clocked just 102 hit batters in his illustrious career, which is a far cry from Drysdale's 154. Beyond the mound, Gibson's personality also carried an air of intimidation, but he often only chuckled at the notion. He even once made a joke that his menacing glare wasn't a strategy, but a product of poor eyesight. According to him, the mound didn't accommodate his glasses, leaving him squinting to decipher the catcher's signals. 
However, even his life off the field pointed more to that intimidating pitcher we always saw on the mound. Gibson often stayed far from his rivals and even his teammates. Socializing wasn't his forte. Perhaps this is why colleagues mostly described him as surly and unfriendly. For instance, after the 1965 All-Star Game, Milwaukee Braves catcher Joe Torre dared to applaud Gibson's pitching prowess after catching for him. But what was Gibson's response? Well, just an unemotional nod and exiting the place nonchalantly without caring for any conversation. Of course, you can barely even talk about Bob's mean run in the MLB without mentioning how he influenced some changes in the league's rules. So here's how it all went down. Bob Gibson's exceptional pitching skills were poised for a legendary showdown as the curtain rose on the grand stage of the 1968 World Series. A battle of titans was set in motion, especially with Gibson squaring off against the formidable Mickey Lolich. The air was electric, the anticipation was building as these two pitchers took to the mound. For six innings, the stadium was a theater of brilliance. Gibson and Lolich engaged in a pitched battle, their arms weaving spells of virtuosity and their opponents silenced, unable to pierce their fortresses. The scoreboard was stuck at zeros and it was a testament to their mastery. But then, the script would soon take an unforeseen twist. In the seventh inning, Gibson's usually unyielding armor saw a little crack and a crucial two-run triple slipped through. Sadly, this game-altering moment paved the path for the Tigers' triumph in the decisive Game 7. Yet, the series was so stiffly contested and action-packed that stories about it would go on for months. Also, the collective pitching brilliance of the 1968 season, especially by Gibson, inspired a transformative change in the realm of Major League Baseball. It was during this season that what we now know as the Gibson rules came to be. It included the lowering of the pitcher's mound and a resizing of the strike zone. At this point, you just cannot help but agree that this baseball legend was truly both influential and an absolute terror.